Good morning, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube today. Uh, welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church uh, Sunday morning Sunday school. Uh, we're located at 385 Garrisonville Road, Suite 99, here in Stafford, Virginia. We are under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor Reverend Floyd Williams. Uh, we'll continue to travel with Samuel and First Samuel this morning. Uh, joining us on the panel, we have uh, Brother Thompson. Uh, Reverend Thompson, and our senior pastor, Pastor William, and of course, I'm uh, Brother Hutchins. Uh, we're going to ask the Lord to bless our study for this morning. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you promised us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we, are, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice, open our minds so that we may receive your external wisdom open our spirit so that we may know your lead and guiding us in understanding of your word in jesus name we pray amen amen i will turn it over to you uh reverend thompson thank you brother hutchings as brother hutchings said welcome this beautiful sunday morning as we dive into first samuel picking back up at chapter four um we're going to start at 18 although we read it just for context um to give you a little creep quick recap, in-depth recap is also on housed on our YouTube page, and that's Ministries of Hope Christian Church on YouTube. Um, in here, we talked the last time we were before you, we saw them go into battle. Uh, the the Eli's sons took the Ark of the Covenant out of the place that it was formerly supposed to be sitting. They took it out thinking it was going to lead them to win the battle, and we saw where 30,000 footmen got killed. We saw them lose 4,000 footmen at first and then 30,000 later. Um, and then after that, God's uh, prophecy came to pass that they were dying in the same day. And as uh, someone came and told Eli that they were gonna, they were dead and they had the ark, Eli flipped over backwards and died because of hearing of the ark, not even his sons, just the ark. So um, we're gonna continue there Brother Hutchings, if you want to pick up there at, um, let's see here. We have chapter four, as always, King James Version, unless we otherwise state, verse 18. And then you'll keep going down to 22. Before you do that, um, Brother Chris, would you write, mm -hmm. read right there on, um, it's right under chapter five, the art travels, that little <clears throat> art there, please. Okay. It says, the art travels. Eli's son took the ark from Shiloh to the battlefield on the lower plains of Ebenezer and Aphek. The, Philipp the Philistines captured the ark and took it to Ashdod, Goth, and Ekron. Plagues forced the people to send the ark back to Israel, where it finally was taken by cattle-drawn cart to Beth Shemesh and on the home and on to the home of Eleazar in Kirith Jerem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, verse, eight, verse eighteen. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he had made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck broke, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seemed mm -hmm. as if he didn't passed out whenever they told him about his son. But when they mentioned the Ark of the Covenant, covenant that was just too much for him. And he passed out, flipped over backwards, and died. Mm -hmm. We don't know the cause of the death, but the, the mention of that Ark was more than he could bear. Mm -hmm. He just flipped out and died. Because mm -hmm. we saw last time where that Ark was out of order even being out there. It shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. All right, Brother Chris, again, would you read uh, 418, please, on your commentary? It says, uh, Eli was Israel's judge and high priest. His death marked the end of a dark period of the judges mm -hmm. when most of the Israelites ignored God. Although Samuel was also a judge, his career saw the transition from Israel's rule by judges to the nation's monarchy. He began the great revival that the people of Israel would experience for the next century. The Bible does not say who became the next high priest. Samuel was not eligible because he was not a direct descendant of Aaron. 
-hmm. But Samuel functioned as a priest at this time by offering important sacrifices throughout Israel. Praise the Lord. Um, Brother Thompson, you have anything on 18 over there? Um, no, similar to what he just said. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And it says, but I like it. Uh, Brother is right there. It says um, that um, Eli's death marked the end of a dark period of the judges. And we just finished reading Judges, so we know what they was going through. Yeah. So the, it says here that his death kind of marked the end to all of that chaos that was going on in Israel at that time. Okay. Now, and you think about that, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The fact that it doesn't say how long that night is. Mm -hmm. And you think about from they're talking about the period of the judges that was over years, you know, years, yes. plenty of years, hundreds mm -hmm. of years mm -hmm. that they were going through that. And now this is marking the end of that period. So you think about how many generations lived and died off and lived yes. and died off, you know, yes. in that time, you know, that's why it's so important for us today. Cause it's like, God, it, it's a blessing that we're here because he kept us in order until our mind was right, you know, until we got renewed, but some don't even make it to that transition period that's right you know that's, right. that's interesting uh -huh. okay. and we know it once again uh the little book of ruth that was in the era of the judges as you said that was, that was numbers of years because with each judge we can go back for it was it 13 of them we can yeah. go back and tally up how many years they served yeah. to let us know it wasn't overnight yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and uh, the glory departs, uh, 19. And his daughter in law, Phineas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the, the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father in law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and trapped and travailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And 22, and she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. Right. As I mm -hmm. mentioned once before, although Benas, um, Benahas, or whatever, however you pronounce his name, he was um, love, a lover of women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a sinner. He was doing all of those ungodly things in the temple of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. taking the best of the meat, having sex with these women. But now they tell us that he had a wife. Mm -hmm. And this wife was pregnant. Although he had been through whatever he had gone through, apparently she must have loved him. Mm -hmm. But there too, it places emphasis on the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. When she learned that her father-in-law, her husband, and the Ark of the Covenant then she started having, she went into tra travail. She started having labor pains. Mm -hmm. It was too much for her. Um, it says uh, in that latter part of 19, uh, she bowed her head mm -hmm. and travail. For mm -hmm. the pains came upon her. She went into labor. She, found, and she went into mm -hmm. labor right then and there. That's what the tra travail meant, the pain, the pain. Horrific pain that women go through whenever they are having uh, a child. Mm -hmm. But it seems like in each one, that Ark of the Covenant, because it mentions here in 21, in the latter part, the glory departed from Israel. Then in 22, the glory departed from Israel, for the Ark was taken. Because God, ark. yeah, glory rested upon them, cherry bones, that Ark, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It did something to her to mm. cause her. And then she died during childbirth, the same as, who do we know? Rachel died yeah. having Benjamin. Mm. Now, here it is. Uh, what is her name? Uh, what's her name? Uh, 
They just say the daughter-in-law. Okay, the daughter-in-law, she died having Ichabod. Mm. So God is giving us a message. Do we have anything on that? Yeah, 19 mm. and uh, down there, the daughter-in-law. Okay, it says uh, Eli's daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, had lost three family members, her father-in-law and her husband and her brother-in-law. And that news, coupled with the news of the capture of the Ark of God, suddenly brought her labor pain. Mm -hmm. And 21 says, Ichabod, Ichabod means, where is the glory? Mm -hmm. the, woman, the, the woman incorrectly associated God's glorious presence with the presence yeah. of the Ark of God. Mm -hmm. However, she was right in the sense that she believed life apart from God's presence was not worth living. Amen. That's 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 powerful right there. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking powerful. too. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you if you truly believe that, let's say God is in this Bible and you can't access Him without this Bible, and somebody come and snatch that Bible away, your whole existence is just through. And that's what I was thinking with her because it's like they if they're still as uh, Pastor said last study, they're still believing God is in this ark. You know, he's not everywhere. There's still so for someone to come and steal it, it's like she's probably done done. I, you know, and Eli fell off the chair and now she done went into labor all all behind. And you think about the beginning origins of that, it's because there was no discipline in their home when these boys ran out doing what they needed to do, when it was brought to their attention, nobody really cast them out or did what they were supposed to do, you know, because if we remember in the desert, Miriam, just for speaking against Moses, was put out the camp with, with disease and they had to wait for seven days. You know, like there's still punishment that goes there and they weren't acting according. Well, they were doing what was right in their own eyes, you know. So that's interesting that now she's come to this point and then to name her son, where is the glory? Mm -hmm. Who because knows what he's about to do? back then had meaning to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brother Chris, would you just do 19 through 22 mm. and your commentary? Okay. Mm -hmm. it says, um, this incident illustrates the spiritual darkness and decline of Israel. Mm -hmm. The young boy, Ichabod, was, was supposed to succeed his father, Phineas, in the priesthood. But his father had been killed because he was an evil man who desecrated the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The terror of God's leaving his people overshadowed the joy of childbirth. When sin dominates our lives, even God-given joys and pleasures seem empty. Mm. 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 That's powerful. <coughs> That's mm -hmm. powerful right there. So that it, it, uh, this incident illustrates spiritual darkness. Mm -hmm. There was no pleasure there. As you said, mm -hmm. they believed that God was in that yeah. and that's as far as their mind could take it and mm -hmm. then some of them were so uh, built into their belief that, that it just killed them Yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't take it mm -hmm. but it says that uh, Ichabod was supposed to be his father, father's, uh, father's successor, he's supposed to take over mm -hmm. but that cast him aside as well Sins of the mm -hmm. father, right? Come on now, mm -hmm. that's right. And then it goes also go back to when I remember when God told Eli what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is said in this word, people disregard it. Yeah. But what He said, it shall mm -hmm. come to pass. Mm -hmm. It shall come mm -hmm. to pass. Mm -hmm. So now, Eli's gone. Pop nine penny is gone, and the daughter-in-law is gone. Mm -hmm. And it all boils down to disobedience. Yeah. When we disobey God, I don't care in what position or whatever, when we disobey him, he's watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our sins will not go unnoticed and unpunished. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think we've gotten away with it. Yeah. We feel good because we've gotten away. But they said an elephant never forgets. Yeah. For God is no elephant, but believe me, he he's not forgetting. 
He says he will forgive you for your sin, cast him into a lake of forgiveness. But he says there's a consequence for your action. Why? He said, because I chasten those whom I love. Mm -hmm. And he loves us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that uh, latter part he read, when the sin dominates your life, that even God, the joy that God gives in that childbirth is lost sometimes. And you see that even today, you know, you have a child being born, there's so much controversy surrounding how that child got here, yes. who did what, to where you can't even enjoy it. You know, um, we've seen so much too, like even, you know, you may have stepped out and got a job God didn't tell you to do, and then you get there and there's no peace. You know, there's no peace there. You are not, you're at odds with this one, you're at odds with that one. There's no peace in the atmosphere of where God sends you. And sometimes he can send you to bring peace, but it's just interesting how we sometimes dilute ourselves with the sin, as it says, and then don't get the joy of what God means for us to get out of something because of what we've done to cloud it. You know, they don't have any joy in victory as they should have been because they didn't take them out like God told them at the beginning when Joshua. Now, we just talked about judges hundreds of years where they could have uh, got rid of these people, like God said. And now they're suffering at the hand of the Philistines because of that simple fact. And sometimes our sin clouds what we're supposed to enjoy because he told them the promised land. They were supposed to enjoy it, land flow, milk and honey, honey, but they did not do what was required at the beginning. So now that part where God said there will be thorns in your sides, we're seeing that happen, you know, and we we ourselves put thorns in our sides sometimes. It's not it's not God doing it to us. It's us in our own actions. Without you know? sense, yes. Yeah. Without sense. And a lot of times when we sin and we think that it's going to be covered up, it's not. Yeah. And there is not always joy when a child is born. Yeah. It depends on the extenuating circumstances around that birth. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of times when we look back, it's sin. Mm -hmm. Why? Because unless we are equally yoked, unless it is blessed by God from the very beginning, a lot of times there's sin and a lot of times it reflects on all parties involved. Have anything else for those verses 18 through 22? Okay. Keep going. If you're just joining us, we're in 1 Samuel, starting at chapter 5, picking up at verse 1 through uh, 5. You may just stop for the time. Amen. Verse chapter 5, verse 1. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they, and when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. <laughs> And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. Let's just skip down to uh, five two. We'll go back to one. Go down five two and let us know who Dagon really was. In the United States, Dagon was originally an agricultural and or storm god of Canaan in Mesopotamia, but the Philistines made him head of their pantheon. Perhaps the Philistines thought they should place the ark by his statue as a symbolic gesture of Dagon's defeat of the Lord in battle. Okay, four as well. It talks about Dagon. Amen. It says Dagon's head and the palms of his hands were cut off, suggesting Dagon's fall was no accident. The positioning of head and palms upon the threshold nearby also ruled out an accident. Amen. And five. Amen. For five states, from then on, the priest of Dagon and all his worshippers avoided stepping on Dagon's threshold 
a threshold that marked the place of his defeat before God. <laughs> and now we see who Dagon was. Dagon mm -hmm. was the Canaanite's God mm -hmm. that was made out of wood. Mm -hmm. But it's we also see here the power of our God. Yes, sir. Because they put Dagon in there hoping to overpower our God. And when they looked mm -hmm. around, this Dagon had fallen at the feet of our Lord. Mm. Mm. That says a lot right there. Yes. And then the bowing position. Like That's right. Yeah, funny, okay? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. To think that you brought this Ark of the Covenant and, and you think about these people, they probably were high off the hog just knowing that we done defeated them. You've heard yes. all this because we saw where they heard all this stuff and they were scared at first trying to pump themselves up. Now they have this false sense of security and this false yes. sense of everything's good. We defeated it. We defeated their God. It was us who did it. It wasn't those people in Israel who they went and fought over here. It wasn't the battle of AI. It, wasn't, it was us. You know, we did this. And to walk in the next morning and see Dagon right there bowing before the box <laughs> must have been a sight to see. It must have been a sight to the point where they avoid walking over there. It must be a sight. You know, we'd have fixed this one time and he fall again. And then to see that it's not even by accident, it said, you know, it had to be put there, you know, and you can imagine this statue had to be big, you know, just that's that's hilarious. That's hilarious. He got jokes. Mm. All right, Brother Chris, would you give us yours on that five, uh, one through twelve? Uh, okay, one through twelve. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, Dagon was the chief god of Philistines. Right there, boom. See what it said? He was the chief god of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. He was number one. Go ahead, Brother Chris. <laughs> And they believed he had helped them in battle and sent rain to assure bountiful harvest. Why did the Philistines place the ark in Dagon's temple? The Philistines believed that the ark represented the power and presence of the God of Israel. They thought that by taking the ark into Dagon's temple, they were taking control of Israel's God and proving that Dagon was superior. The Philistines should have immediately started to doubt their assumptions since the great idol of Dagon fell down in front of the ark several days in a row. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the people living nearby began to get sick and died that the Philistines realized for certain that the ark represented a source of power greater than they had ever seen, mm -hmm. a power that even their god Dagon could not control. All right, this mm -hmm. right like there, it goes back to Reverend Thompson, that's what you were saying. Mm -hmm. That's what you were saying. Mm -hmm. They thought that since they had been winning, mm -hmm. God will allow you to do certain things. Mm -hmm. They felt now that they are, he said, we, we are the greatest. We are the greatest. But only what you do for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. It's not what man is doing. And they were putting their hope and their trust in this wooden God. Mm -hmm. Because it said initially when he started off, he was the God, someplace, someone read it, he was uh, the storm, and they believed in all of the different elements that was going on around them. Mm -hmm. Okay? But they did not believe. At the only time I could see a little uh, pinch of them believing is when they said, get this ark out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they knew something was... They didn't know. Right. They didn't believe in our God, but they knew something was wrong. They on, um, get it away mm -hmm. from here. In mm -hmm. other words, they would call it today as bad luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. get it out of here. Mm -hmm. But okay, take it in the house of uh, Dagon and let Dagon be around him. We know who will be in control. Mm -hmm. In sight. <laughs> they didn't realize the same wood that they had made this uh, God mm -hmm. out of, God cre our God created that. Come on. That's right. Pray because he said nothing was made without him. Mm. Mm. And this mm -hmm. is why we cannot we cannot worship stuff and things. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because it was all in his plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All by him. Mm -hmm. Whatever we get, as I told you before, God wants us to be rich. Yeah. But most of all, rich in his glory. Yeah. Okay? We're going to, when he allows us to get stuff and things, we give him the praise. Mm -hmm. We give him the glory. By God's grace, we have this. Mm -hmm. God allowed us to get it. God allowed us to have it. But most people, oh, I had to work for it. I had to get up early this morning. I had to go mm -hmm. to that job. Not realizing that I, you talking about, couldn't have even been gotten up out of the bed had it not been for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Given the breath, very breath you breathe, the air that you take in. Mm -hmm. So he says the Bible said, not in some things, he said in all things give thanks. And that's what we have to do. In all things, we are going to give God thanks, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Because mm -hmm. we know that he made the good mm -hmm. and he made the evil. Amen. And we know that he contro controlled each. You know something that you said, he is funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's a yeah. I mean, now here, I can you imagine how he was thinking whenever they brought this piece of wood at the end? <laughs> he wasn't in that box, but he's just looking on. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking at them. Now, don't, don't get it twisted. He loved those Philistines because he created us all. That's yeah. right. Yes. But he would, he, uh, time and time again, he gave them the opportunity mm -hmm. to repent, mm -hmm. to, return, to turn around. Mm -hmm. How do I why did I say that? He used Ruth, did he not? She was a mother. Yes, he did. And eight got off their boat. Come on now. And he mm -hmm. used uh what's my girl's name? Rahab, did he not? Yeah. So God can use us all. He wants to use us all, but we have to be willing to be that willing witness and a servant of his. Amen. Not to set false gods before him. Mm -hmm. they, they to overtake him. Right. Or we go out here and start up some little God and put us on top of it and think we can overrule him? Mm -hmm. That's the truth. <laughs> that goes uh, to what you were just saying. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. The Lord had made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Mm -hmm. So he had that. And then um, I thought this was interesting, this first part of my commentary. The latter part is about the same as uh, Brother Hutchins, but that first part says, Dagon was the chief god of the Philistines whom they believe sent rain and assured a bountiful harvest. But the Philistines, like most of their pagan neighbors, worshipped many gods. They're, the more gods they could have on their side, the more secure they felt. Yes. That was why they wanted the ark thinking that it helped the Israelites, it could help them too. But when the people living nearby began to get sick and die, the Philistines realized the ark was not a good omen. All right. Get that thing out of here. Yeah. It's, it's causing uh, people to die. It's causing them to get sick. Yeah. Because yeah. they were bringing this wood in. As it's, You read it. Yeah. They were worshiping many gods. You yeah. probably go in any house and around any house. They had a different God that they were worshiping. Mm. Mm -mm. Where we know there's only one. And we will see when we get to the book of Kings. Mm. The Israelites mm. were the same identical way. They looked at stuff and things. Yeah. Not yeah. at the true living God. Mm -hmm. But they wanted this man, our mm -hmm. earthly man, to rule over them. So they could be like those people over there. Mm. A lot of times, you better be careful who you follow. Amen. Mm. So true. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we see that today, too. A lot of different religions have so many different gods. You know, like Hinduism, different things. They have so many different gods for specific reasons and all of that. Even some Christians have so many different people. In, in in that they're worshiping this saint, that saint. They have so many different things yes, and yes. not the one true omniscient, you know. It's interesting that that's nothing new under the sun. I mean, nothing new under the sun. Every time you think about something, it go back to the word, nothing new under the sun, because we see it today, you know. Mm. 
Nothing changes. It just no. takes on a different appearance. Yeah. But look beyond that appearance and see. Same thing. Same old. Same old. Same mm. old. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. So we have those verses right there. Um, anybody else on those verses before we get to Ashdod afflicted? Amen. Amen. Um, so let's keep going there. Brother Hutchings, if you want to read six through eight. Okay. Uh, verse six. <clears throat> but the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod and the coast thereof. Mm -hmm. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, the ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, what shall we do with the ark of God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of God of Israel be carried about unto Gath, and they carried the ark of God of Israel about either. Mm -hmm. right, mm. That's uh, number six. I want to read the um, commentary on that, please, number six. Okay. It said, The Lord now oppressed the people of Ashdod, plaguing them as he had plagued the Egyptians. Emirates come from the Hebrew word for swelling and probably described symptoms of bubonic plague, a disease spread by rodents. Others believe the term describes boils or tumors. Mm -hmm. uh, five, eight, perhaps gas located more than 20, um, 20 miles away at the mouth of the Eli Valley was on the friendlier terms with Israel, prompting relocation of the ark. Mm -hmm. And if we go back to Deuteronomy, it refers you to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 27th verse. It said, The Lord will smite thee with blotches of Egypt, and with emeralds, and with the scales, and with the itch whereof thy cannot be healed. So we know that that was some form of, um, well, it said here, the plague. Mm -hmm. There's a plague, and we are going through a plague right mm -hmm. here in this country right now. With mm -hmm. uh, what is this thing that's going on? The pandemic, that's a plague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just interesting. They're not having any rest, even after they've run this battle, still not having any any rest during that time. These Israelites, that's mm, God showing Himself. Sometimes it can take um it can take a bad thing to happen in order for God to show himself like he said he made it all so all of it's going to work according to his purpose mm -hmm. you know the good the bad the ugly and different all of that's going to work according to his will you know everything so you may think that you're doing something opposite God's will cuz you don't believe in him but trust and believe it's still in his will of what Amen. what going to be done He's going to use the evilness for his glory, too. Yes. All this, you know? When he said all things, Romans 8, 20, yes. all things work together for the good. For the good. All yeah. things. Oh. He mm. said the good, bad, and indifference. God is going to If he created Satan, he can handle him. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. nothing out here that God can't handle. Come on. He will allow you to do certain things, but when you're doing those certain things, most often it's a test. Yeah. It's a test. He's going to see how you're going to stand or if you're going to stand. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fall over to that weak side, mm -hmm. or are you going to take a stand for him? Mm -hmm. I was studying in the book of David just to see how God tested David and it didn't Turn yeah. out to say it was a test, but he did. Yeah. yeah. Everything that sometimes when we are going through things, God, God knows what we're going to do before we do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's going to, he, he gives us free will. And he wants to see what your will is going to be. Mm -hmm. Do you will to serve him or do you will to serve people? Mm -hmm. 
And we are so caught up this day and time in us, mm -hmm. me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. that we can't look up. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the sad part about it. And um, I said that before, even before um, the pandemic, with all of this stuff going on, the churches were dropping down. Not that many people were, were attending yeah. because they didn't want to be bothered with that stuff. What did they need to go hear about the Lord for? Or how, why did they need to get into some Bible teaching church? They didn't need that. Why? Because we're doing just fine. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you, well, I'll say it again. You can run on for a long time, but great God, honey, will cut you down. Mm -hmm. Whatever, if, whatever we do, make sure that we keep God on the forefront. And mm -hmm. it doesn't, that's why he tells us over in Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And it's not to do a long drawn out prayer. As I said, Jesus, mm -hmm. or just Lord, I thank you. Let him know that you are still connected to that powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only thing he wants. Because we were created, the Bible tells us over in Genesis, we were created to worship him. Yeah. But, but he allows us, and this it's good that he allows us, and it's sad because we don't have, yeah. a lot of us don't have the strength. Yeah. But that's when we call on him. And let him know, Lord, I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that man over there looks good. Oh, that food over there looks good. Mm -hmm. I, I can't resist it. Yes, you can if you call him. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on your own strength. He tells us that we are weak. Mm -hmm. But when we place it in his hands, trust me, he will make a way for you to escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, a lot of that evil stuff feels good to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that good food tastes good to you. Mm -hmm. Knowing, I know what I'm not supposed to eat, but sometimes I do it anyway. <laughs> but I call on the Lord after I do it. <laughs> That's right. Why? Because I know when I do it, I'm subject to end back about there at Stafford Hospital. Amen. I don't care how minute things look. Yeah. We're still to put it in his hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The big things, the little things. Call on the Lord. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. said, Jacob mm -hmm. called on him all night long. Mm -hmm. He said he wouldn't let go until the break of, and told God, I'm not going to let go mm -hmm. until you bless me. Mm -hmm. And God bless him, changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So now if he did it for Jacob, he can do it for me. Praise the Lord. Let's keep going. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, Brother Hutchings in your commentary. You got something for six through eight or six and seven. Okay. It says, uh, <clears throat> although the Philistines had just witnessed a great victory by Israel's God, over their God Dagon, they didn't act upon that insight until they were afflicted with tumors, uh, possibly in connection with bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. Similarly, today, many people don't respond to biblical truth until they yeah. experience pain. Come on. Are you willing to listen to God for truth's sake, or mm -hmm. do you turn to him only when you are hurting? Now, Lord, mm -hmm. Before you go into the next one, now, that is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about God until they get down with some se severe pain yeah. or get into some trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, oh, Lord, help me. I won't do it again. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's such a forgiving God. He'll reach down, pick them up. The minute they get on their feet, God, who? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing we've read, <clears throat> read about from the very beginning with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they got in trouble, what would they do? Mm -hmm. Call on the Lord. Right. Call on the Lord. And drift right back into sin. Yes. That was the that was mm -hmm. the cycle in Judges, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. When things were doing going well, they did right with was it the, in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the minute they got down and out, oh, they fall on the ground. They 
cry and they beg and they plead. But mm -hmm. that's what we do today. Individually, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's why I said, think about God all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're going to walk around with the Bible in your hand. No, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. This is why he tells us to read that word, get it in us. So when right we on call table. upon those hard times, we can call on it. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then we not only can we call it on him, we can say, Lord, you said. Yeah. yeah. Call him in his word. And he will lift you up. Mm -hmm. And this part right here was so true. Okay, you stopped it. Uh, you can go ahead. Okay, it says, uh, <clears throat> the Philistines thought they had defeated God because they had beaten Israel and captured the ark. Mm -hmm. They soon learned that no one defeats God. Amen. Their sweet victory turned sour as God began to destroy them with a plague. Mm -hmm. And five eight says uh, the Philistines were governed by five rulers. Each ruler had authority over a different city: Gath, mm. Ekron, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Gaza. The ark was taken to three of these capital cities, and each time it brought great trouble and chaos to the cities. Mm -hmm. Amen. Each time sin, to, a sin enters in, if it enters into your home, it's going to bring, bring chaos. That's mm -hmm. right. See, mm -hmm. we have to take it out of the crowd and bring it and put it on a personal level. Yeah. But when we invite sin in, yeah, it may be that we feel good for a minute or two. Come on. A little while. Just so you can get comfortable. Come on now. Mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. once. But, well, the old saying is, if you give Satan a ride, he'll want to drive. Yeah. So you bring that sin up in there, or it may be good for a little while. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something, the end result is pain. Yeah. And then you turn around and wouldn't even know how you got there. Mm -hmm. That first of all, when you're going through this sin, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And for a while, it seemed like it is. I wouldn't lie to you. Mm -hmm. It seems good for a little while. Mm -hmm. But you have better jump back and say, Oh, Lord, the only thing I'm doing that I do for the Lord is going to last. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to, that's anytime we call on the Lord. Yeah. We don't need to go into a building to worship God. Come on. We don't need to be around people to worship Him. Mm -hmm. I have a good time right up in here by me, lonely self. So. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Because wherever God is, yeah. it's not about show. Mm -hmm. It's not about trying to be. Mm -hmm. It's what we want to be in him, with him. And so at Acts 17, 28, it is in him that we move, live, and have our being. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as long as we know that we are connected to him, then that power of the Holy Spirit is working in and through us. Amen. Praise the Lord. But don't get it twisted. That's the reason why we have so many backsliders out here. Mm -hmm. Sin, always remember, it looks good, it feels mm -hmm. good, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. But it's temporal. Mm -hmm. It's only going to last for a little while. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, maybe you carry it on for a year or two or whatever. Yeah. But the only thing you're doing is digging a hole deeper. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That um reminds of that scripture. Um, <clears throat> don't let in Ephesians, don't let Satan get a foothold. Because he get a foothold, he's coming to take over. Don't let Satan get that foothold or else it's got there. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Brother uh Hutchins. We left off at verse eight. Um, of chapter five. So next time we're before you, we'll pick up at verse nine. Amen. Amen. So um, right quickly, we'll go around for final comments. Uh, Brother Thompson. Amen. I'll just um, just think about what we're just reading and what the Israelites are going through and what um, Pastor recently stated is that, you know, they got to stay connected with that higher power. And that just made me think of what the Israelites are going through and how no matter how 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 covered you think you are how blessed you think you may be or you know how in right standing you may, may think you may be if you're not staying connected with that higher power and staying you know 
going to God for direction, as we stated, and you know, for all your you know all your things that you may go through, you know, going to him, asking, you know, for direction that when you think you, you know, too high or too mighty, you know, you can't fall. So you stay in that connection with that higher power will get you through, you know, time so you, you may not have to go through what the Israelites are going through at this particular, you know, period. Amen. Amen. Reverend Thompson. Um yes, it reminds me of a scripture pastor had said uh to me. Uh, every plant which my father, my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up in Matthew 15, 13. Um, and it really spoke to me at a time where I was going through something. But just that, it reminds me of that scripture because here's this ark traveling and it's the ark of the covenant of God. And even though it belongs with the Israelites, the Philistines have it, but they have no peace, you know. And so it's like it, the the art can't be planted there. It just can't. It's, they're taking it place to place to place. It's got to be rooted somewhere else because it can't be handled wrongly. You know, so we see all that together in today, you know, going in, into that deeper. But we see that today. So I just say, you know, plant these words in your heart because they bring life. As the Bible says, write the words on the tables of your heart because they bring life and not just life, they help you through those situations because life will get hard. And it's one thing to quote scripture all day long, I don't care how much you know it, until you have to stand on those words, that's when the true character comes out of whether you're a believer in God or in believe that he'll do just what he said, or if it's just all in theory and it's fun to study. You know, so get them in your heart because it's a living word and it's gonna help you in those times when you can't help yourself. Amen. Amen. Pastor. All right. Isaiah 40, and that is eight. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of God shall stand forever. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what we what religions, different religions we hook up with, whatever we go, however we go. The word of God is going to stand. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also said heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word is going to stand. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that he is the word. Mm -hmm. He's the word. So I would say to the people, get into your word. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run around here and telling people I'm Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Just live your life mm -hmm. the way God would have us to live it. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself because none of us have arrived. We're all works in progress. Mm -hmm. But just <coughs> believe, <coughs> trust God, have faith, and hold on because it's, as she said, it's not an easy ride. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 How are we going to uh, ask the Lord? Are we going to thank the Lord for this uh, this uh, lessons we had today? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence here today. We pray that what was said here today was pleasing in your eyes and reaches those you intended to reach. We have enjoyed fellowshipping with each other and spending time in your presence. I pray that lives have been transformed and situations have changed. We want to say thank you. Lord, as we leave this form and remind us to continue worshiping you in our homes throughout the week, fan into the flames the knowledge that you've given us that we may use it out there in the world. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. 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 So uh, following, uh, uh, please follow, uh, join us at 1030 for our, our powerful sermon that will be going on. Our sermon will start at 1030. Um, we, we invite you to join our prayer line on Tuesday night from 7.30 to 8, as well as our um, continuation of our Bible study on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, donations to this ministry can be made at our website at ministriesofhopechristianchurch.com using Square or PayPal. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have a blessed morning. Thanks, Lord.